in the infancy. Uh, clearly, I mean, addressing food insecurity is a challenge. And uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, well, uh, countries may uh, make resources specifically available for some vulnerable groups. And, you know, even in the most difficult situation, and we have a number of uh, good examples, uh, you know, coming uh, also from uh, Central and South America, where during difficult periods, uh, pregnant women um, as well as uh, young, very young children or, or elderly would be protected. So by having uh, a social uh, support network and providing food vouchers, uh, uh, food gifts, and this is of course done also with the support uh, of aid organization, uh, UN organization, uh, civil society, but having a, somehow a preferential system to protect these vulnerable groups and providing them with um, the, the, the necessary quality food, as well as the, uh, whenever necessary, uh, the, 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 the supplements uh, that would uh, somehow be um, uh, a replacement uh, for, for some key nutrients and some key foods, but they can also be used in clearly for short periods in emergency situations. And what are the health uh, and development consequences of a, a baby or an infant that is born with low birth weight? Uh, immediate consequences are, of course, a uh, high risk of mortality. It's actually low birth weight is one of the highest cause uh, of, of infant mortality and, you know, getting a disease. I mean, so, so an immediate vulnerability. But what science has demonstrated is there is also a long-term vulnerability. So children who are born with low birth weight will become adults who more likely become overweight adults. It seems a paradox, but that's a reality. Or adults who then develop uh, diabetes, hypertension. I mean, uh, children who were born with low birth weight are going to be adults uh, uh, with chronic diseases.